subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm yeshi chanzo Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday the 2nd of February. Budget a step towards modern self-reliant India says PM Modi. Advocacy group calls on Sri Lanka to repeal anti-terror law. And female students join male peers as Afghan universities reopen. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday lauded the budget 2022-23 as a step towards a modern and self-reliant India as it focuses on providing basic amenities to the poor, middle class and the youth. He stated that post-pandemic the possibility of a new world order is emerging and the initial indicators of it are already visible. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday in a virtual address to his ruling Bharatiya Janata Party lauded the union budget 2022-23 as a step towards a modern self-reliant India with its focus on providing basic amenities to the poor, middle class and youth. India unveiled a bigger budget of 529.7 billion US dollars for the coming fiscal year, stepping up investment on highways and affordable housing to put growth on a firmer footing as the economy recovers from the pandemic. Creation of jobs, a push for digital education and preparations for new age technologies such as blockchain and 5G services are among the highlights of new budget. It, however, has no changes in the income tax slabs or hikes in exemptions. बीते सात वर्षों में जो निर्णय लिए गए, जो नीतियां बनी, पहले की जिन नीतियों में गलतियों को सुधारा गया, उस वजह से आज भारत की अर्थव्यवस्था का निरंतर विस्तार हो रहा है. India has allocated rupees 6,292 crore for development assistance to other countries, mainly in its neighbourhood, including Taliban-ruled Afghanistan. Bhutan has got the maximum outlay, followed by Nepal and Myanmar. All macro indicators have indicated that Asia's third largest economy, India, was well placed to face challenges, helped by improving farm and industrial output growth. The government's annual economic survey said on Monday. India and Nepal has signed a memorandum of understanding for the construction of a motorable bridge over the Mahakali River in northern border under New Delhi's grant assistance. Nepal's Transport Minister Renu Kumar Yadav on Tuesday said the newly announced project would strengthen bilateral relations. India and Nepal signed a memorandum of understanding for the construction of a motorable bridge over the Mahakali River connecting Dharchula in India's Uttarakhand with Dharchula in Nepal under Indian grant assistance on Tuesday. The agreement was signed by Ambassador of India Vinay Mohan Quatra and Secretary Ministry of Physical Infrastructure and Transport Government of Nepal Rabindranath Shrestha. Following the signing of the MOU, Nepal's Minister for Physical Infrastructure and Transport Renu Kumar Yadav said the project would strengthen Nepal-India relations. Indian Ambassador Quatra said the project's completion would establish a new foundation for economic prosperity in those areas which are connected. The construction of the bridge is planned to commence soon. Indian government had approved signing of the MOU between the two countries for construction of the bridge in January. In news from Pakistan, the inflation rate in Pakistan steeply rose to 13% in January, the highest in two years due to a surge in prices of food, fuel and electricity. 
the country statistics bureau said on tuesday this comes as pakistan also starts to embrace the impact of inflationary media budget introduced last month Pakistan's Consumer Price Index, or CPI, rose to 13% in January from a year earlier. The Pakistan Bureau of Statistics said on Tuesday, the highest in two years. In December, the inflation figure was 12.3%, the Bureau said in a news release. The increase in CPI compared to last January was led foremost by electricity cost, which went up by 56.20% year-on-year, and cooking oils which rose 50.33%. Rising fuel and electricity costs have put increasing pressure on the government of Prime Minister Miran Khan. Meanwhile, textile traders in Karachi said their businesses have been hit hard and urged the government to enhance exports and cut down imports to boost the economy. और रुपीस जब इतना डीवैली होगा इतनी महंगाई बढ़ेगी और एक्सपोर्ट और इंपोर्ट जो है इंपोर्ट काफी बढ़ गया पहले शुरू के अंदर एक्सपोर्ट काफी बेहतर थी अब वापस इंपोर्ट बढ़ना शुरू हो गया है और मैं समझता हूं कि जितना हम एक्सपोर्ट को बूस्ट करेंगे इतना हमारी इकोनॉमी बेहतर हो जाएगी The rise in inflation rate comes as the government last month passed media budget increasing taxes in a bid to control the fiscal deficiency a move meant to improve chances of a successful review of the international monetary fund program Pakistan entered the 3 year 6 billion US dollars IMF program in 2019 the leaders board is expected to meet this week to review country's reforms progress and economic targets The United Nations mission to Afghanistan has called on the Taliban administration to release details on the detention of two Afghan journalists who disappeared on Monday. Fears for the safety of vocal opponents of the Taliban and prominent women have risen since the Islamist group took over the country last year as foreign forces withdrew. The UN assistance mission to Afghanistan UNEMA on Tuesday called on the Taliban administration to release details on the detention of two Afghan journalists who disappeared on Monday Aslam Ajab and Waris Hazrat of Ariana TV and Afghanistani media network were taken on Monday afternoon according to Ariana news manager Ali Azgari UNEMA in a tweet said UN urges Taliban to make public why they detained these Ariana news reporters and to respect Afghan's rights A Taliban administration spokesman Bilal Karimi said it was investigating the men's abduction and denied they had been arrested. Fears for the safety of vocal opponents of the Taliban and prominent women have risen since the Islamist group took over the country in August as foreign forces withdrew. Many civil society and women's rights activists fled the country. Also on Tuesday the UN's human rights spokesperson gave a briefing in Geneva expressing major concern over the disappearance of six people last month in connection with the women's rights protests. We are very alarmed at the continued disappearance of six people who were abducted in Kabul 2 weeks ago in connection with the recent women's rights protests. We are gravely concerned for their well-being and their safety. These reports have also brought into focus what appears to be a pattern of arbitrary arrests and detentions as well as torture and ill treatment of civil society activists, journalists and media workers and former government officials and security forces in per- in Afghanistan. Another Taliban administration spokesman Zabiullah Mujahid rejected the UN human rights spokeswoman's assessment saying it was investigating the situation involving the abducted women. The Taliban says they have an amnesty for any previous opponents including Afghan military members and that they respect women's right in line with Islamic laws and customs but many human rights advocates and foreign diplomats remain skeptical More news from Afghanistan Afghanistan's public universities on Wednesday opened for the first time since the Taliban took over the country last year with female students joining their male counterparts heading back to campus only universities in warmer provinces opened on wednesday tertiary institutions in colder areas including kabul are due to resume on february 26 
Public universities in Afghanistan on Wednesday opened for the first time since the Taliban took over the country last year, with female students joining their male counterparts heading back to campus. The Taliban administration had not officially announced its plan for female university students. But education officials told Reuters women were permitted to attend classes on the proviso they were physically separated from male students. Only universities in Burma provinces opened on Wednesday. Tertiary institutions in colder areas, including Kabul, are due to resume on February 26. The United Nations late on Tuesday praised the inclusion of female students at the country's public universities, appearing to indicate officials' confirmation. UN Secretary General Special Representative for Afghanistan Debra Lyons on Wednesday tweeted, Let's all support the return of Afghan young female and male students to the universities across Afghanistan. Under its previous rule from 1996 to 2001, the hardline Islamist Taliban had barred women and girls from education. The group says it has changed since resuming power on August 15 as foreign forces withdrew, but has been vague on its plans. And high school-aged girls in many provinces have still not been allowed to return to school. Some private universities have been reopened, but in many cases, female students have not been able to return to class. The international community has made education of girls and women a key part of its demand as the Taliban seek more foreign aid and the unfreezing of overseas assets. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. The International Commission of Jurists has asked that Sri Lankan government must repeal the controversial Prevention of Terrorism Act that gives the police sweeping powers to arrest suspects without trial. This comes after the government proposed reforms in the law which the advocacy body has termed woefully inadequate. The Sri Lankan government must repeal the controversial Prevention of Terrorism Act or PTA that gives the police sweeping powers to arrest suspects without trial. The International Commission of Jurists or ICJ said in a statement on Tuesday, adding that the proposed reforms by the right-wing government were woefully inadequate. The advocacy body said the proposed amendments to the law such as the reduction of detention period and allowing a person detained for 12 months to seek bail still allow for persons to be deprived of liberty for an entire year without being given the opportunity to be heard before a court of law. The proposed amendments have come before a session of UN Human Rights Council in March, which had last year called for a timeline to be set for PTA's comprehensive review or repeal. Critics warn the law is being used as a weapon targeting dissidents and minorities in the Buddhist-majority South Asian island nation. This comes as there have also been calls by right groups to release Sri Lankan human rights lawyer Hejaz Hezbollah, who has been in prison since April 2020 under the PTA. Sri Lankan authorities said he had been imprisoned for links to the perpetrators of the 2019 Easter bombings, which killed more than 250 people the island nation's worst attack since the end of civil war in 2009. Amit bone chilling cold, the endangered Himalayan black bears are being given a special diet at the Dachigam National Park in India's Jammu and Kashmir. As their metabolism slows down during hibernation period, officials said it is important to feed them nutritional food to keep them energized. <music> The Himalayan black bears are getting special care amid bone chilling cold at the rehabilitation center of the famous Dachikam National Park in India's Jammu and Kashmir. The hibernation period is underway amid the harsh winter season, but the black bears do not completely go into sleep and need special diet, an official said. As they go into a restful mode and their metabolism slows down during the winter, Jaggery, honey, dates and seasonal fruits are being included in their diet by workers of Wildlife SOS or Save Our Souls at the center. Typical hibernation में नहीं चले जाते। इनका activities तो चालू रहता है। उसको you know energy provide करने के लिए feeding का हमें बहुत खास ख्याल रखना पड़ता है। और जैसे कि आप इनके health से भी वो show हो रहा है कि किस तरह का feeding इनको दिया जाता है। So इनको healthy रखने के लिए इनका feeding का ध्यान बहुत जरूरी है। As they go into a restful mode and their metabolism slows down during the winter. 
jaggery, honey, dates and seasonal fruits are being included in their diet by workers of Wildlife SOS or Save Our Souls at the center. The endangered Himalayan black bear is found in the Himalayan belt stretching from Kashmir to northeastern Assam state. It is large yet compact amongst the three bear species found in India. The other two are the brown bear and the sloth bear. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.